So one of the biggest questions that I get asked is, how do you start a brewery? What is it like to own a brewery? Um, you know, are you just sitting around and drinking beer every day? And the honest answer is the business of craft beer fucking sucks. And it does. Like, like, think of it as a business because it is. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of jobs, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of work. And as a business, it's just about as bad a business as you can get into. It's people heavy, it's capital heavy, capital's cash. It's low barrier to entry. Literally anybody can get in the business, case in point. And with all of that said, it's fucking hard. It's really easy to make a bad product. It's really easy to make a mistake every day. It's really easy to break something. It's really easy to hurt yourself. And fucking anybody can do it. The business of craft beer fucking sucks. But, God help me, I love it. As a business, it's a hard one. But as a passion, there's nothing like it. My name's Wesley Keegan. Welcome to Tailgate Brewery. We came a long way. That's what the song say. And I could do all things. I could do all things. Yeah, I could do all things. Yeah, yeah. We came a long way. That's what the song say. And I could do all things. I could do all things. I can do all things. Yeah, yeah. I'm not afraid of the moment. I'm not afraid. I can't hold it. I gotta show up. Gotta get up in the morning. I gotta do it for Kobe. Lately, I'm zoning. Lately, I know where I'm going. Taking whatever controller. Show me opponents. Show me opponents. I got a gift and I'm starting to own it. I'm standing at our HQ location. We are made up of three different locations, and what we do is we do craft beer, craft pizza, and what we call it craft pizza, it means pizza made from scratch. It's awesome. Um, and it's a family-friendly, all-are-welcome environment. Our HQ location is basically the, uh, we call it HQ, it's our headquarters. It's a large production brewery. It's also a smaller pub system where we do all of our research and development. And you know, we have 30 different beers on tap at every location, plus or minus, and about 20 of them come out of this location where they're one-offs, they're creative, they're um, maybe sometimes a little bit silly, but always excellent. Our Music Row location is the first cidery to come out of a brewery in Tennessee. It's the first cidery in Nashville, and same kind of concept. We do small batches, we make uh, creative ciders there where almost all of them are on draft exclusively at our Music Row location, so you gotta go there to try all them all. And then our East Nashville location is our third location, and that's our smallest tap room. It has a fooder, it has a Grundy, and that's a location where we'll do a lot of brewing, where we'll add retinomyces or other different types of funky bugs to the process, and we can make some sour beer, wild beer, uh, whatever your characterization is of that product out of. And sometimes we even play a little bit with spontaneous. So that happens out of there. And the goal and idea is that with the three different tap rooms that we have, you're getting a different opportunity and a different experience at each one. So hopefully as we grow and more tap rooms come online, you'll see some more unique um, derivatives off of the main project of, hey, we're here to make beer. We get asked a lot, what is it like owning a brewery? What do you do every day? Do you just drink beer all the time? And those types of questions get pretty repetitive, but what's interesting about craft beer is as common as it is, as much as the industry is growing, there's not a lot of video content to it. Um, there hasn't been a lot of documentation on what the day-to-day -day is like. So we figured we're gonna create this, we're gonna see if it's interesting for us, and hopefully it's interesting for you, and maybe it does answer those questions of what is it like owning a brewery and what do we do every day? Because the answer is maybe not what you think. It's, it's a little bit of everything. We got started here in Nashville and, you know, tap rooms weren't open seven days a week. I mean, I remember there was like a couple tap rooms that were kind of tap rooms and, you know, were like overtly, hey, we're not really a tap room, please don't take us off draft um, friendly retailer that you know we really want to support us you know it was a very contentious relationship um, but the business model of tap rooms you know was evident and you know I've always likened a tap room to like an Apple store um, you know the ability to come to a brewery tap room and see the people see the culture touch the product see the creators 
um, you know, and have an experience will prompt people, consumers, uh, guests of, of said tap room to go seek that product out wherever they frequent, you know, the neighborhood bar, the grocery store, their, their local mom and pop, whatever that is. That model wasn't really here. And, you know, I, I remember when we, when we opened, people were like, what do you mean you're gonna be open seven days a week? Like, can you even do that? Like, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna like unlock the door. <laughs> and, like, and like, we hope that people come in. Um, it, was, it was really something where, you know, people were convinced that there were just, you know, restrictions. And there are, there's plenty of them, but there were restrictions that we couldn't operate. And like, the only restriction was ourself. Uh, we were all ages, you know, which was a very common thing all over the United States. And that was another question where people were like, you, know, you want to have a kid in a tap room? You know, and I, I think maybe at the time I was, I don't know, 28 years old. And so I've got friends that had kids and like, they didn't have a kid and then decided to just stop drinking beer. So, you know, like, why wouldn't you allow a family to come in? The, the craft beer business, you know, like most things kind of like, most trends and most like cultural moves kind of come from the coasts and, you know, work their way into the middle of the country. Um, and, you know, I'd been traveling all over the U.S. in those early years and, you know, was very fortunate to go to great breweries, new breweries, like household names that weren't household names at the time, beer bars, work with distributors, I mean, all the above. We knew where we wanted to get and we understood the time that it was going to take. And, um, you know, some of that just takes a little bit of courage to make a commitment that people don't think is possible. And you know the long grind of that when you see those things start to turn, we're so far ahead in those next commitments and those next um, growth plans that when we hit those things, usually somebody comes to us and they're like, "Hey, remember when you told us you were going to get in Kroger?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, but we're on to the next, and I think that's pretty cool. You know, you can certainly be a brewery of one. You can do. And, and we were, you know, once upon a time it was just me. And one person can do all of the recipe creation, the vision, the, um, the idea, to the actual process of brewing, to packaging, to selling, to delivering, to pouring. And I've been there. Uh, but today with over 100 people, the reality is that if we put one beer out, I mean, there's probably 20 that touch it. So I think that the very basic function of what we do is we make and package and sell beer and the amount of variety and effort and people and collaboration that goes into just one is overwhelming. And five years. When you get to see it and you get to see that process come through on a fun and accessible format like video, and you start to think about a place like ours makes over 200 unique beers a year and thinking about all the other breweries that are doing the same thing, it starts to be a little bit more, uh, a little more fun to kind of peel back the layers and see how everything happens. I always personally felt that there's, there's a great opportunity to just document the opening and creating of a brewery. We're open, we're created, and we're in kind of a unique position where over the next six and 12 months, we're gonna have some opportunities to talk about what that looks like. Maybe it's opening another tap room, which is opening a brewery. Um, the development of that, the, the blood, sweat, and tears of it, new beer releases, new programs, new equipment coming online. Um, all the development that is created when something new starts, we kind of do that every day. And we've got some pretty significant milestones that are coming up that we're gonna try and find a way to navigate where you know, we can peel the curtain back a little bit, but still keep some of our secrets. Shout to the city that raised me. Shout to the people that made me. I'm from the 80s. I don't think mumbling wavy. I grew up black on a Jay-Z. Maybe I'm crazy. I ain't been wondering lately. If we can be authentic, I think we've found, you know, in the seven years here in Nashville, that we're doing things the right way. And if we can do our job right with a camera rolling, then I think that you might have an opportunity to see some of that authenticity. And if you haven't been here or you've heard about us or you've only been once or twice or shit, you come every day. You know, I think that that authenticity is 
something that's really, really important and it's a genuine effort that we try to share both with our team and with our guests. I can do all things, I can do all things, man, I can do all things, yeah, yeah, yeah. I check the scoreboard. It's a people business. We love being around people. It's a creation business. We get to make something new every day. We get to do something from start to finish. We get to build from zero. We get to start over every day. We get to constantly create something that's going to be one day, one year, five years, a lifetime. It's not a lot of opportunities like that around. So we get a chance that we can work with every walk of life. We get to meet every person that comes through our door. We get to hear instant feedback and we get to have fun doing it. The best thing that can happen in life is you can pursue your hobby and make it your living. And if we do things the right way, we can make that happen. It's a long burn, it's slow. Somebody ever tell you that the craft beer business is a little bit difficult? It's pretty tough. As a business, it's a hard one. But as a passion, there's nothing like it. We're gonna have some fucking fun too. That's what the song say. And I could do all things. I could do all things. Yeah, I could do all things. Yeah, yeah, we came a long way. That's what the song say. And I could do all things. I could do all things. I can do all things. Yeah, yeah. I'm not afraid of the moment. I'm not afraid I can't hold it. I gotta show them. Gotta get up in the morning. Hey guys, I'm Kels. I'm the seller lead here at Tailgate. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Go enjoy another beer or keep enjoying the one you're already drinking. Have a great day. And that's what the song say. And I can do all things. I can do all things. Yeah, I can do all things. Yeah, yeah, we came a long way. And that's what the song say. And I can do all things. And I can do all things. And I can do all things.